bureaucrats and say, butt out, we're going to do this right. I'm sure you're aware that on History Channel, uh, they've been reporting for years, it's now confirmed that we had prior knowledge of the Japanese attack and they allowed that to take place. Sure. And now you see the U.N. empowered, World Court empowered. Looks like the U.N. is going to get to take over all that oil supply there in Central Asia. The face scanning cameras were in trouble. Now they're on the fast track. Yep. Uh, this has sure brought the police state sure funding. Has. Sure has. And I've, I've been saying for years that um, once you have license, which we've had, the next step is tyranny, and it's, it really is scary. It, it, the whole thing is scary. The, the, the well, American there's people another... are saying, I want to be safe. And I will, uh, who was it, Ben Franklin said, if you give up your liberties for security, you will eventually lose both your security and your liberties. Absolutely. What was the intel you were getting from these agents? What were they saying? This agent here in Chicago filed the affidavit where he laid out the whole way that the money moves, the way that it's handled, how it comes out of the Middle East into the, into the Chicago area, not only Chicago, but into the United States, how it's covered, how the operatives are covered, and then how the money gets back, how it's transferred back, and where it's kept while it's here. And that affidavit ran like 30 pages, laid it out. And they, uh, that was the only one. He had to go through hell on earth in Washington he had to fight like a tiger. Everybody in his own bureau and in the in the Department of Justice was against him. And still now, the FBI agents in Minnesota knew about all this and had the evidence, but they couldn't even get a wiretap or a warrant to search these guys. Exactly. And and we're talking about some of the actual hijackers. Exactly. And they, I mean, this um, and then this woman that uh, was talking to me, she had other contacts who were in naval intelligence and in other areas. And she was reporting that there was one of these terrorists that was involved or connected with the bombing in Oklahoma City was working at the Boston airport. One of my, uh, a friend of mine who happens to be an agent, had information showing that there were Hamas operatives working in baggage in areas at O'Hare Airport with free access to any part of the airport. But no one would listen. Clinton and his boys didn't want the, world, the, the United States to realize that Flight 800 was a terrorist attack and that the uh, Oklahoma City was a terrorist attack because they didn't want to have to admit that the, the intelligence of the United States was totally destroyed. Well, Craig Roberts uh, says it best. They wanted to demonize the patriots, exactly. the Christians, and uh, create this internal security force to watch Americans because, oh, the precious Arabs, they can't do anything wrong. That's what exactly what they started. Remember, the I forget what nitwit it was that came out and said, you know, you can really blame some of the uh, the Rush Limbaugh's and the talk show hosts who are fomenting this this terror. Well, that was Bill Clinton. Yeah, Clinton made that statement. I, this is, and they had a handy guy in McVeigh. They had a real handy guy. I also know, and I, I know this through affidavits that I've read, that there were people, eyeball witnesses, who saw the Middle Eastern man running from the scene alongside. McVeigh. And why don't the feds just release those 12 surveillance camera tapes if it's just McVeigh alone? Those su surveillance camera tapes are going to show that there was a Middle Eastern man running with him. Some of these people who, were, who gave affidavits were interviewed by the FBI during the course of the investigation. They, they were interviewed about the second person they saw, and the agents tried to make them say that the second person was Nichols. Every single one of these people said, absolutely not. It was a Middle Eastern type individual. Al Husseini. Now, listen to this. None of those 302s, none of those investigative reports have ever surfaced. So the FBI comes up with all these thousands of documents that they claim they overlooked, but the key ones where they tried to get them to say it was Nichols never surfaced. What were they saying about the attack on Lower Manhattan? Originally, the original report that I got was that, there was, that, that they had arranged for three attacks on the United States. One... They were going to take down an airliner. Two, they were going to attack a federal facility in the, in the heartland of the United States. First one's TWA, Oklahoma City, right. in reverse order, and then now. And the third one was going to be a massive attack in lower Manhattan. The original plan was a suitcase nuclear, tactical nuclear weapon. These, the people that, were, that I was talking to were very, very, very credible people. And... Uh, Okay, here's the bottom line question. Uh, you're getting intel, attack on lower Manhattan, third big attack. 
what did you say? I mean, who did you talk to? I mean, we know you tried to get to the attorney general. And I tried others... to get to the attorney general. My first move was to go through some of the people I knew in Congress uh, to see if I could, uh, you know, somehow, because I was working on a two-front. It was really a two-front war. On the one hand, I wanted to get someone to listen to Jaina about Oklahoma City but on the, and what was coming up, what may be coming up. On the other hand, I was trying to get somebody to uh, understand that Hamas is, has infiltrated the United States. I tried the House. I tried the Senate. I tried the, to get to the Department of Justice. You know, the very people that put up roadblocks from, on the uh, attack against the terrorists under Clinton are still there. And uh, they still constitute a uh, almost like a, a moat between the people with information and the people who should hear the information. So when you're talking to these Justice Department people and folks in Congress trying to give them all this information, what do they say to you? They say, oh, my, that's wonderful. Yeah, we'll, we'll get right back to you. I have never got a call back. When I was on a, a radio program out east, out in Pittsburgh, and I just made, I, I hinted at this. I just hinted that the FBI was sitting on information when they should have been sharing it with others. And as a result, there was a breakdown in, uh, in um, intelligence. The next morning, I got a call from the office of the Speaker of the House, uh, who happens to be an Illinois Republican. Hastert. Hastert, right. And uh, they said, we understand. They hadn't heard the show, but they, under they said, we understand you've got some information, et cetera, et cetera. I said, yes, I do. I would really like to share it with somebody. I have at least two and maybe three witnesses that should be subpoenaed to come out there and testify in executive session and tell you what I was talking about. Okay, we'll get back to you. That never heard again. A couple of days later, I got a call from the uh, Senate Intelligence Committee. We hear that you've got information, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, I have information, and I'd be perfectly willing to bring it out to you or I'd be perfectly willing to uh, have my witnesses go in there and testify, but they have to be subpoenaed. Okay, we'll get back to you. That was last week. I still haven't heard a word. I, I, you know, I talk to people like you who are in the, uh, in the media, people who are really well aware of what's going on, and they cannot believe that this can happen. Strangely enough, the one person, the, the one people that I haven't heard from is the FBI intelligence people. Of course, if I did hear from them, I wouldn't talk to them anyhow now, because they're totally incompetent. They got their funding tripled after the sure. first... Sure. Uh, Boy, that's great. They can all get a raise, and they can all sit around and tell everybody that their informants tell them this and informants tell them that. I'm still trying. I'm still trying, and I'm still trying to get some somebody to listen to me out there and listen to my witnesses and to, to at least take the material... You know, Dana Davis had the same stuff she showed me. She walked into the FBI in Oklahoma City shortly after the bombing and said, here, I have all this material. It may be of some assistance to you. And they said, we don't want it. They refused to even take it. Just like Sudan trying to give us the names of al-Qaeda and arrest bin exactly. Laden. Exactly. And they said, we don't want to do that. Well, then I think it... You're an investigator. You're a prosecutor, Mr. Shippers. You prosecuted the president of the United States, successfully got the indictment, but not... Uh, prosecuted the outfit here in Chicago for five years. So, you know, you can see the motive. I see more intelligence funding. I see the cashless society with the biometrics. I see an expanded U.N. I see NATO planes patrolling our skies. Right. Uh, U.N. General McKenzie on Nightline uh, the 19th, the week after the attack, eight days after the attack, saying we need U.N. troops on our borders. I see global government being empowered and uh, a takeover of the Middle East and Central Asia uh, by the West. I mean, I, I see great dividends for them by allowing this to happen. So I hope to God you're wrong. I, I do. but uh, And I, I can't fight with you or argue with you on it because it does seem to be heading that way. For I trying to protect their country, the heroes get crucified. The heroes get crucified and the bureaucrats sit out there and tell each other what a great job they're doing until another city blows up. And then they say, we need more tools. They have all the tools in the world. They could have found the money years ago if they had just listened. We've got to go public because we tried to do it the right way. We tried to do it by going to the people in whom you would normally repose your confidence and trust. It didn't work. 
Nobody cares. Well, we know this. The bureaucrats are going to get even more funding now. You want more evidence of prior knowledge? The October 24, 2001 Associated Press reported that Ari Fleischner in a White House press briefing admitted that George Bush and much of his cabinet were already on Cipro on September 11th, three and a half weeks before the first traces of it popped up in Boca Raton, Florida. This is a whole other section. We can make a whole other film on it, but it was actually proven that the anthrax 